Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Recently, local armoured mine protected vehicle manufacturer DCD Protected Mobility officially opened its new factory in Isando in Kempton Park, east of Johannesburg. Keith Campbell was there. DCD Protected Mobility, which is part of the DCD Industrial Group, is famous for its Husky armoured mine detection and clearance vehicle and the associated mine detonator trailers but has now diversified its range to include the Springbuck Armoured Personnel Carrier and its all-new mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicle, the Mountain Lion. Company General Manager Andrew Mears explains why they set up the new factory. Well, the main purpose was the DCD group needed to create capacity at the old rolling stock and defence division um, to allow f to exploit the opportunities in the rail infrastructure development in the country, but at the same time they wanted to focus what had been a very successful defence business that had been operating together there and uh, position it for growth in the future. This has been laid out where it was a little bit sub-optimised where we were operating from because of the, the, very, yeah, the different products and the mix with the, the rolling stock division. I mean here we've got a, a properly laid out um, you know, best practices in the production, Six Sigma lean manufacturing, uh, capability where all the processes flow a lot more easily and smoothly and where stuff is fed into the, the production line on, on a much smoother basis allowing us to reduce the time specifically the time used to, um, you know, to manufacture the, the products as well. We've also introduced state-of-the-art laser uh, cutting capabilities which enhances our fabrication uh, capability. Some of that stuff we used to outsource um, we don't have the need to do that um, anymore with this capability, which also allows us to react a lot faster to things we need to do at the beginning of the, uh, of the production line. We've installed a 600 ton press brake, which we didn't have before, that allows for bending of heavier armour plate for some of the other you know, vehicles and programmes we anticipate um, producing in. And we've uh, split our, what was known as our manufacturing capability actually into a manufacturing capability and what we're calling an operations or production engineering and quality assurance capability, which also enhances our processes, which it's allowed us to bring in higher level qualified uh, industrial engineers to help manage our processes on the ground while the production line and that is running. Those, those are sort of the major changes we've made on the production line. We manufacture our two-seater version of the Husky, which is actually now the, the mine detection uh, and route clearance vehicle we are punting in the international market. We've just been successful with sales to Spain and now to Turkey. Uh, and there are a couple of other countries uh, looking at those vehicles at this stage. And then we also manufacture our uh, Springbok vehicle here, current orders uh, for the Nigerian police uh, that are coming out of this facility. And we will manufacture the mountain lion vehicle here when it goes into full production. Other news making headlines this week, there are big implications for South Africa's power plan as ESCOM sales fall to 2006 levels. PPC CEO Ketso Gordon pushes ahead with his infrastructure Codessa vision and Transnet Freight Rail says its locomotive delivery schedule remains unchanged. State-owned utility ESCOM reported a 3.7% decline in electricity sales to 216,561 gigawatt hours for the year ended March 31, 2013, lowering its sales to levels similar to those reported in 2006 and 2007 prior to the 2008 power crisis. It had been budgeting sales for the year of 222,083 gigawatt hours, which would have represented a 1.2% contraction. In terms of our sales, uh, we've been asked this a number of times over the last two days. We, we're down to 216,000 gigawatt hours and we've been asked, well, when last did you sell this? I double checked it this morning, Brian. In 2006 year, we sold 208,000 gigawatt hours and in 2007, we sold 218,000. So these are the lowest gigawatt hour sales since 2006. And it's, it's a concern from an economy perspective.
PPC CEO Ketso Gordon reports that he has received strong backing as well as some skepticism from a range of private companies following his call for the creation of a negotiation body to add momentum to the execution of South Africa's multi-billion rand infrastructure program. Now we've reached a point where the level of trust between the public and the private sector is probably at a, at a low point. We're also sitting on a situation where infrastructure needs have been well identified. There's significant resources both in the public and the private sector to address those needs, but the work is just not happening. And so we felt that a CODESA type process where you bring all affected parties together, negotiate uh, what they see as the major obstacles to rolling out that program, and then working together to actually start the implementation process would be a useful inf intervention. Now we see it as a very detailed negotiation which could take up to six months. But in the meantime, we could probably start with one of the projects, you know, focused on housing or focused on schools, to show that cooperation and partnership and negotiation can produce optimal outcomes for the country. Transnet Freight Rail still expects to take delivery of the first 10 of 95 new dual electric locomotives in December, says CEO Siabonga Gama, dismissing claims that the contract awarded to China South Rail to build the new rolling stock was six months behind schedule. There's nothing that has changed from the day that we entered into the contract with CSR up until today. Everything that we've entered into contract with CSR will be delivered by the time that it was supposed to be delivered. And, and in fact, our engineers have just returned from China last week and they even told me that we're actually ahead of schedule. The tender for 599 has closed. Um, we are evaluating that. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.